Then there's effectively a third layer to forum shopping, which is in the UPC itself. I'll cover the main rules on that too, but to do all of this, we'll also need to understand the structure of the UPC, particularly on the following aspects. One, the role of the Court of Justice of the EU and the European Patent Office. Two, the structure of the UPC panels and its judges. Then three, what language will apply and what law. Four, I'll also give an overview of procedure with a particular emphasis on preliminary injunctions. Then we'll look at the UPC jurisdictional rules, in particular, joining and bifurcating actions. And finally, cover opt-out and the considerations that go into an opt-out decision. If, however, the actual or threatened infringement occurs in or may occur in a UPC country that hosts a local division or regional division, but the defendant is domiciled outside the territory of the UPC, the choice changes. And remember that being domiciled outside the UPC at the moment doesn't just include the UK and US, but also Ireland, where there hasn't been UPC ratification yet, and a number of other EU countries where there is no sign of ratification yet. This has the effect that the defendant's domicile is no longer a factor in choosing the forum. Instead, the action can be brought in the local or regional division, the actual threatened infringement, or in the central division, which is what we're showing on this slide. But going back to what I said a little earlier on the risks of bifurcation, there are some further decisions that have to be made if an action is bifurcated in order to allay the risk of this injunction gap I was talking about. There are three possibilities if a decision is made results in bifurcation. One, Central Division must endeavour to accelerate the revocation proceedings. Two, the local panel, its discretion, stays the infringement action, ending a final decision in the revocation proceedings. Or, where there's a high likelihood that the relevant claims of the patent being enforced are invalid, the panel must stay the infringement action until a decision has been made in the revocation action. So if there's a stay of the infringement action as a result of options two and three, which are on the slide, bifurcation may actually have the consequence for a patentee that the patent in dispute is held invalid at first instance before a decision on infringement, the kind of reverse injunction gap. That's obviously an advantage to a third party challenger and a big risk of bifurcation for a patentee. 